Hello and welcome to the Columbia Daily Tribune's Behind the Stripes football webcast. This is Tribune sports editor Joe Wall Jasper along with Tribune football beat writer Dave Manor. Dave, for a team that's kind of licking its wounds, what better than to have the number one team in the nation with the best defense in the nation and the best coach in the nation and <laughs> all the rest come why, in? Why not? Um, nationally televised again on CBS, which is probably not something Missouri is excited about at the moment. Um, nor it probably is Gary Danielson and I think maybe by the second quarter Vern's going to be doing like magic tricks. <laughs> Only a quarter from Gary Danielson's behind his ears. There's no magic here, Joe. <laughs> There's, There's no, no magic. magic. There's no magic wand I can wave. Um, let's talk about what might be a realistic goal for Missouri in this game. I think they're about a 21 point underdog, which I would assume is going to go up as, as the money comes rolling in on Alabama because I don't think there's any Missouri fans out there no. putting any money on Missouri. Um, just your thoughts on what could they accomplish to where you would leave Saturday's game and say, okay, I feel better about Missouri than when I entered the weekend. Well, if, I'd say if it's competitive in, in the third quarter, um, I think you feel pretty good and you at least put some doubt in the minds of Alabama's players and coaches, whether that they're going to come in and, and steamroll Missouri. If, if it's relatively close in the second half, um, you can give yourself a chance. But that's, that, that, that's easier said than done. I mean, this, this is an Alabama team that is it's obviously good on defense. They're always good on defense. They're top five in the nation, every category. They're really efficient on offense. Um, they don't have necessarily superstar players on offense that, that are going to be up for a lot of national awards, but they haven't thrown an interception yet. They're one of the least penalized teams in the country, and they're perfect in the red zone. So they take that you, you have no margin of error for them because when they get the ball, they're going to score. They're they're not going to turn it over, and they're not going to punt a whole lot. So uh, Missouri's offense, you know, to, knowing that Alabama will score at will most times, I th they just have to maintain some drives, and they can't afford three and out and punting nonstop. Definitely can't turn the ball over, but that goes without saying. Uh, so I, you just have to take advantage of every opportunity you have the, with the football and, and tr I guess try to get into some field, a field position game uh, because you know with Missouri's offense, you're not going to be scoring very much. Sure, and I think, I think Alabama, the games that haven't blown your doors up this year have been the games that were just so obviously in their favor going in that you kind of wonder if their mind was wandering a little. The Western Kentucky game, I mean, it, they dominated, but it wasn't, yeah. they didn't like to score 70 points. Mississippi was in the game with them a little bit. I think when you play Mississippi at home, you probably, if you're Alabama, that you might be mildly disinterested. Um, <laughs> I think people were looking at what Mississippi did to see if there's any sort of blueprint for Missouri, but in the end, you know, Alabama beats them handily too, so it's not like that was a, a lot of aha moments in there. Right. I think that well, a few things you can lay up from Missouri, I think one thing is how can you keep Corbin Burkstresser upright? So. You don't let a loss of this game turn into, oh, now we've got to burn the red shirt of a kid. Because you don't really, I don't think you, I think maybe some people would think, well, since the season's going up in flames, let's play Matty Mock and see what he has. Then you end up with two kids that are both going to be sophomore quarterbacks, Burkstresser and Mock. And so, you know, probably one of them isn't going to end up hanging around. And then I've kind of seen enough times in Missouri when desperation yanking of red, shirt, red shirts of quarterbacks late in the year. And then... Three years, four years down the road, you kind of wish you had it back. Corby right. Jones, they did that to Justin Gage, Justin Gage, you know, and he ends up just being a wide receiver. So I just don't think, you know, I think that's kind of a panic mode move. But he would have no choice, basically, if, you know, you're lining up five wide and those Alabama guys are crushing Burks to us every play because he's right. not going to be able to take four quarters of that. Right. And and also, you know, some people say, well, maybe maybe they need to go to Matty Mock if Corbin's looking this bad. But, you know, these coaches have seen these quarterbacks every day in practice. There's a reason Burke Stresser's number two. So I, I don't From think... what we saw in scrimmages, I don't yeah. know that there would have been any reason to... For, other than just we haven't seen him screw up in a game. Right, and, right. And, you know, I, I, I think you give the coaches the benefit of the doubt on this one. They've got the guy in there they think is the best option other than James mm -hmm. Franklin. So, yeah, I think, I think you're right. You try to minimize the damage as much as possible. Um, you know, try to run a little bit, see what you can do with Kendall Lawrence. Uh, don't, you know, feed your, your redshirt freshman quarterback to, to this defense 30, 40 times. You know, unless it's a close game and it's working for you, then, yeah, then I think you do everything you can to win the game. But uh, you, you just got to be careful in this one because this defense is so good. And I know Nick Saban and Gary Pinkle are college teammates and, and are, are friendly, but, you know, he's not going to take it easy on them just because uh, they went to college together. The other thing, I think, if, if you're looking at Missouri's defense, I think maybe this is a nice little challenge for them. If they can, they haven't, uh, they, I don't know, they, they did okay against Georgia. I think they were put in a lot of bad positions. They weren't great against South Carolina. They gave up all those passes in a row, but they, 
you know, compared to what the offense was doing, they weren't bad. And the other games, they've been really good. It'd be interesting to see how they can compete against a really high-powered offense. Yeah, I think they're looking forward to the challenge. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a pro-style attack. They're, they're not going to be spread all the time, but they will be spread some. So it, they'll get a good mix of, you know, under center, two-back stuff, and the, and the spread formations that they, you know, used to see all the time. Uh, so I, I think they're looking forward to it. You know, Missouri's defense is, uh, you know, unlike the offense, they've been very healthy this year, very few injuries. So I, I think they go into this game fairly confident that they can at least, you know, give Missouri a chance the way Sheldon Richardson's playing. I, this is the best offensive line he'll ever go against. And, uh, you know, but, you know, I think he's one of the best defensive tackles that they'll go against all year, Alabama. So I think that's a pretty decent matchup, I think. Okay. Well, tune in tomorrow. We will discuss the rather shaky start to SEC football for Missouri and whether there's any second thoughts about what they've gotten themselves into.